Hey, everyone. It's Pastor Mike. Before we get to today's episode, I want to encourage you with another one of our podcasts that take you deeper into God's Word. After listening here, please check out Little Things with Amber L.B. Swenson. Amber's one of our bloggers and writers, and she's amazing at helping you navigate life's challenges by keeping your eyes fixed on Jesus. Amber is a sister in Christ, really mature, really honest, really funny, a really good friend of mine, and I know she's going to encourage you with her message. Just search for Little Things wherever you get your favorite podcasts. When I was a teenager, I would consider myself a what if -er. So if I had to make a decision, I would always run it through this what-if filter. What if this? What if that? And unfortunately, all that did was make me worry. I couldn't make decisions, and ultimately, it just robbed me of my joy. Unfortunately, today, even, I find it fall into this what if -er mode. Uh, the, the experts, though, have a technical term for being a what if -er. They call it uh, anticipatory anxiety. It's worrying about futuristic events that you have no control over, but you assume the worst. Now, if you consider yourself to be a what if -er, or you deal with anticipatory anxiety, I'm here to tell you that you're not alone. Even Jesus Christ dealt with bouts of this. And we have that recorded for us in three of the four biographies written about his life. And it tells us how one day he was with his disciples. They were in a garden called Gethsemane on the outsk outskirts of Jerusalem. And when he was with them, Jesus was overwhelmed with this anticipatory anxiety because the very next day he was going to die. Now, obviously, impending death would cause anyone to be anxious. What's interesting, though, is that Jesus knew this was coming. This is something that he had declared to his disciples for the past three years, telling them that he had to die in order to save them and us from hell, to, to give us the promise and, and, and the truth of eternal life in heaven. But even still, even though Jesus knew this was coming, it overwhelmed him. It filled him with anguish. In fact, one of the, the writers, Dr. Luke, said this in Luke chapter 22. He says, Jesus' sweat was like drops of blood falling to the ground. His sweat was like drops of blood falling to the ground. He was in such anguish because of what was going to come the next day. And it wasn't just the fact that he was going to die, but it was because of what Jesus knew he was going to experience. He was going to take upon himself the sin, the shame, and the guilt of the entire world from every human being from the beginning of time to the end of time. Just think about that for a second. I can barely handle my own guilt and shame, let alone someone else's, and you multiply that by billions upon billions. Even though what we're worried about doesn't compare to what Jesus went through, it doesn't mean that he doesn't care about what you care about or that he's concerned about what you're concerned about. He is because he's gone through every single one of those emotions, and yet he is here for you. And, and he didn't allow his anticipatory anxiety to overwhelm him, to run his life, to ruin his life, but instead he was proactive about dealing with it. And this is what he did. Jesus could have, in that moment, isolated himself from his friends. He could have run away and said, I got to be on my own. But instead, he said, come with me. Come to the garden and pray. And so he asked for his, his fellow believers to come with him and, and take his burdens and put them in the Lord's hands through prayer. And then Jesus went off and prayed on his own. And he, he went to the Father and he said, look, tomorrow, I know I'm supposed to die to save the world. But if there's another way to do this, fantastic. And he asked three times for this. Now, here's, here's what we learned. A, don't isolate yourself. Call together your friends and say, please pray with me. B, go pray to the Father on your own. And it's okay, Jesus did it. Say, if there's a different way, if I don't have to go down this path that's really worrying me, can you show me? Can you make a different way for me? That's okay. But when you pray that prayer, pray it with humility. Understanding that God's in control. He sees the big picture. He knows the best route. Because when Jesus prayed those, prayer, those prayers, he, he finally said, your will be done. Not my will, but your will. What you want, not what I want. And what did God want? God said, I need you to go forward. I need you to die on the cross. I need you to pay for the sins of the world in this way. And that's what happened. The very next day, Jesus went to the cross. He died for you and for me. He took our shame and our guilt, and he was taken off that cross, and then he was put into that empty, lonely tomb. Now, if the story ended there, you might wonder, why in the world would I want to go through that awkward uh, exercise of going to friends and saying, would you please pray for me? I'm, I'm having a difficulty. 
why would you go to God and, and even ask for another way out and ask for his wisdom? Why would you humble yourself and say your will be done? Why would you do any of that if that's where the story ended? But the story didn't end there. The very three days later, God comes back, keeps his promise, raises his son back from the dead, exalts Jesus Christ, gives him a glorified body. This is why when you're going through your what ifs, when you're dealing with anticipatory anxiety, that we get to follow in Jesus' footsteps and say, yes, I need these people to surround me. I need their support and prayers. Don't isolate yourself. Turn to your friends. Turn to the Lord and tell him what's going on in your life. Tell him what's worrying you. Ask him to change the results. But if not, humble yourself and trust that he's got a better way because he does. And at the end, you can know that God is going to use this situation right now that you're concerned about for his glory and for your good. Let's pray. Father, so often uh, I find myself worrying, we find ourselves worrying, and all it does is, is create angst in our souls. But Lord, you, you showed us the route. Help us to be surrounded by good Christian friends. Help us to talk with them about what's going on in our lives. Lord, we're talking to you right now. If there's a different way for, for us to go, please open that up. But if not, we submit to you. Not what we will, but what you will, what you want for our lives, Lord. And we trust that you're gonna use this for your glory and for our good. It's in Jesus' name we pray, amen.